Since 1973, Caterham Cars has produced essentially one model, the 7. And 50 years later, the 7 still stands largely unchanged as a model of what a sports car should be. Light and stripped down with a ton of horsepower per pound, and above all, just plain fun to drive. But now, Caterham is forced to confront change in the automotive industry, specifically with electrification. The British automaker has now unveiled the Project V, its first fully electric model, but is it a departure from the classic sports car? Hey, I'm Creech and this is Creech and Cars. In this video, I'll answer that question by taking a look at the exterior and interior design of the Project V and then going over the performance and mechanical specs. Finally, I'll go over pricing and discuss when you can expect the Project V to go on sale. But first, here's a brief overview of Caterham as some viewers in certain areas may not be very familiar with the brand. The story starts in 1957 when Lotus launched the Lotus 7. Designed by Lotus founder Colin Chapman, the 7 was a manifestation of Lotus's philosophy, a lightweight, simple, and clean roadster that offered the purest driving experience. The 7 lasted four generations until it was discontinued in 1973. Upon this cancellation, Lotus dealer Graham Neal thought that the model would continue to sell well, so he bought the production rights and began producing the Caterham 7. Since then, the design of the car has been virtually unchanged, and now the lineup consists of around nine variants, ranging in price from under $40,000 to around $75,000, and like I said earlier, this has been working for Caterham for the past 50 years, but Caterham has decided to design a completely new vehicle for the electric era, so here it is, the Project V. Right off the bat, you'll notice the much more modern and traditional sports coupe design, and it is absolutely beautiful. This is one of my favorite new car designs I've seen since I started this channel, and if it were going into production today, it would be the best looking electric vehicle on the market. I love how it looks like a modern take on the decades old design and that can be seen in the lights. Taking a look at the tail lights, we can see rectangular LED lights with rounded corners that replace the standard halogen rectangles. The trace perimeter gives it a more high end look and at the front end, the Project V keeps the rounded headlights although they aren't perfectly circular like the 7s. Below the headlights are the short thin LED daytime running lights. Also, Caterham has done a great job of blacking out the headlight housings, and when the headlights are off, it really looks like the lights are completely tinted. In between the lights is the Project V logo. It's a circular badge with Caterham written on the top with Project below that and then a large V in the center. The grill looks like a stretched out version of the 7's grill, but it's not terribly different and I'm really glad they didn't leave it as just blank sheet metal. Two large air curtains straddle the grill, and there's a large gloss black front splitter as well. The mirrors are accented in the gloss black color, and while the 7 still has completely separate fenders, the Project V works them into the body as massive fender flares on both the front and back. The large black wheels feature a split spoke design with the Project V logo in the center cap. The side profile looks great and is essentially three ovals with one focused around each wheel and then the larger one for the cabin. Coming back to the rear, you'll notice the lip spoiler that blends in well with the body and the gloss black bumper that's not actually connected to the other body panels, which gives it a little bit of the separated fender look that the 7 has. One major change on the Project V is the addition of a roof, and not just a soft top, but a full on hard top coupe, which I didn't expect from Caterham, but I'll go more in depth on the thinking behind that decision later in the video. Now let's take a look inside, where similarly to the exterior, the Project V has a much more normal design and structure, but it's still very unique. Perhaps the most unique aspect is that the Project V is a three-seater, with two normal bucket seats in the front, but only one seat in the back. This rear seat is centered and completely integrated into the wraparound rear panel. I feel like the color scheme works really well in here with the black, white, and gray panels against the greenish teal Alcantara. There will be an option for two seats in the rear, but the 2 plus 1 configuration is way cooler. The front buckets are constructed of carbon fiber, and there are fairly aggressive side bolsters that you would expect. More of the Alcantara material trims the mostly white door panel, and instead of a traditional handle, there's a little loop that you would pull to get out. There's a modern looking infotainment screen, but it sits below three circular gauges, although it's unclear what they are reading. 
The standard gauge cluster looks analog, but it may be digital, and it sits behind a nice looking but basic steering wheel. To the right of the gauge cluster is the gear selector, which is a metal trim dial. And while there isn't really a center console, there is a decently sized cubby to increase the practicality of the car. Inside and out, the Project V is gorgeous and really one of the best new sports cars I've seen in a while. But to really make the Project V an enthusiast EV, it needs to have great performance to match the looks. Of course, the driving dynamics will be very different from the 7 in virtually every aspect due to the electric drivetrain. Starting with weight, obviously electric cars will always be heavier, but the Project V only weighs 2,623 pounds, including all fluids. While it's a good bit heavier than the 7, considering the battery and powertrain, along with the more proper interior and body construction, 2,600 pounds is an absolute achievement for Caterham. This means the Project V is only about 200 pounds heavier than a Miata, so it should still feel really light when you get it out on the road. There's a single motor mounted in the rear. It is a permanent magnet synchronous motor that puts out 264 horsepower. The battery is split into two packs to spread out the weight along the bottom of the chassis, which is constructed of a carbon fiber aluminum alloy. The battery is a 55 kilowatt hour unit that can provide up to 250 miles of range and Caterham is working on an advanced insulation system to retain range in different conditions. The final result is a 0 to 60 time of less than 4.5 seconds leading to a top speed of 143 miles per hour. With an adjustable double wishbone suspension in both the front and rear, the Project V can offer multiple drive modes with different feels. The vehicle should come with a normal mode, sport mode, and then a sprint mode for quick bursts of acceleration. Caterham has plans to begin production of the Project V by late 2025 or early 2026, and that would make it a 2026 model year. Caterham is targeting a base price of less than £80,000, which is about $100,000, but other than that, we don't have any other details as far as options or trim levels. So with all that information in mind, Will the Caterham Project V be successful? Caterham's CEO has already publicly addressed the decision to move ahead with the production of the Project V, as it is a bit controversial with Caterham's customer base, but from a business perspective, Caterham sees the Project V as a complement to the 7, and the brand will sell both models for the time being to help the company grow into a more mainstream audience. This explains the more conventional design and coupe body style, and I agree with the decision to finally create a new model. No one else could have sold the same model for 50 years and still be around with a cult following. I understand that's part of what makes the 7 special, but at some point classics have to rest. And like I said, the 7 will still be sold alongside the Project V for the foreseeable future. Really, the only issue I have with the Project V is the price. I think it should be closer to the $60,000 to $70,000 range, as right now the Project V is more expensive than competition like the 718 Cayman. Alpine A110, and even the Lotus Amira. I think the Project V would struggle to pull customers away from those other models, especially considering the 718 EV should arrive around the same time, so buyers who want an electric coupe will have multiple options. This means that although the Project V targets a larger market segment, it still won't be a volume seller. Nothing specific has been said about the US market, but I think the Project V will only be sold here in kit form. So that's everything you need to know about the Caterham Project V, Caterham's first real departure from the 7 and potentially the first electric vehicle that is truly designed for enthusiasts. Let me know what you think about the Project V in the comments. On this channel, I post videos about car news like this, as well as history and culture, so if you like this video, be sure to check out the other videos on the channel and subscribe so you don't miss future uploads. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.